Okay guys, this is the video for lab 11 on electrochemistry. Now technically, you know, electrochemists like to try and make this a little bit more complicated than it really needs to be. The main concept here is if you put two metal, metals near one another who like to either be oxidized or reduced depending on how you look at it differently, you will get a flow of electrons or some electricity. You can kind of think about this in terms of um, how a battery works or how uh, you can see rust form. Metals like to do different things. Okay, And so as we talk about this, just kind of keep in mind that the handout makes this a little bit more complicated. Um, but I'm going to really break it down the same way I do in lecture. And if you do it this way, you really can't get it wrong. Okay? So first things first. A galvanic cell has two different, um, what's it called? Uh, chambers. So you have the um, anode chamber where you have a piece of metal in a metal solution. So it's zinc, this is zinc and zinc sulfate. This is copper and copper sulfate. It doesn't matter, it could be in zinc nitrate, it could be in zinc chloride, mm, no, not that. But something that is very, very soluble, okay? Um, zinc chloride would work, it's just, it's just mm, not as well. Uh, in terms of what's gonna happen is you have an anode side now, for our purposes, anode just means oxidation. If you think back to, there it goes, maybe, there it goes. Um, the different terms that we use in lecture, there's oil rig, and Leo Gurr. Leo Gurr means lose electrons is oxidation. Gurr is gain electrons is reduction. Down here, same thing. O oil just says oxidation is losing electrons, reduction is gaining electrons. Okay, now technically um, we kind of already talked about this a, a couple times, just not necessarily in these terms. And so when you're talking about losing electrons, it means you're going from the metal to oxidized metal. So metal going to you know, the metal ion and the electrons floating around. Um, don't overcomplicate this, okay? Um, it just means that at the anode, we're going from Zn solid to Zn2+, plus, okay? At the cathode, cathode is where the reduction happens. Honestly, the way I remember this, anode and oxidation both start with a vowel. Cathode and reduction also start with um, both start with consonants. There we go. And so reduction means you're going from a ion, 2 plus, 3 plus if you're talking about aluminum, whatever, to the solid. <clears throat> and so we can talk about here where we've got copper. Copper is going to go from copper 2 plus, gain the electrons to form copper solid. Over here at the anode, you're going to have the zinc solid losing electrons to form zinc 2 plus and two electrons. Titan? Um, train of thought. So as, okay, so as the reaction happens, because this metal is being oxidized, this anode piece of metal actually does get smaller. You can see that happen if you're doing it in lab. Um, this one, on the other hand, because you're forming the copper solid, it actually gets kind of 
bigger. It, it looks almost like fur as the copper solid adds on to that copper um, piece of metal. And um, you can watch it happen. So this will continue until either there's no more anode um, or there's no more um, zinc um, that can be formed into the solution to give the electrons to the cathode. So if we've got electrons being lost here and electrons being gained at the cathode, they have to travel. So the electrons are going to travel to where they are needed towards the cathode. Okay, um, anode is giving them up, cathode wants them. On this side it's um, a reactant, over here at the anode it's a product, it's being given off. Um, and so as you do this, you're getting a buildup of negative charge, okay? Electrons are going towards the cathode. It's getting a lot of negative over here. So what will happen is the anions will actually move. You'll have the sulfate ion or whatever, you know, uh, solution you have go through some kind of porous disc or a salt bridge or whatever you want to call it, and they will actually... Um, allow for a stabilization because you're going to have a whole bunch of positive charged metal ions here, a whole bunch of negative electrons here. Um, the anion of sulfate will go through this bridge and kind of stabilize the positive charge of the um, the zinc over here. Okay, and it just kind of allows for more electrons to, to happen. So the more um, concentrated your solutions, the longer and faster this can technically happen. Okay, so now let's talk about the numbers. Now the reaction or the math for this is about as easy as it can get. Okay, um, first if we just talk about, um, did I put it in the wrong spot? It doesn't matter. To calculate the E of the cell, you always take the, electro the reduction potential of the cathode minus the anode. A couple of reasons for that. First, if we look at our table, all of the half potentials, all of the half reactions are listed for reduction. So if we're doing oxidation, it's the opposite. And so rather than try and reverse the sign, we're just going to say minus the anode and it automatically does it for you. So you don't have to do anything, you just find out what your cathode is, what your anode is, and you plug it in. Okay? Now, here's the great thing guys. You know you're on the right track, if you get a positive value. If you get a negative value or you could get it more positive if you did something else, um, you need to fix it and you reverse it. But this is going to tell us if we did it the right way. Okay? So let's look at this for a second. Let's pretend we didn't have these values. So I tell you that we have zinc and copper. Those are the two things that can be happening. Um, and if we didn't know which it was, we would have zinc that can either gain two electrons to form zinc metal or zinc metal that can go and lose electrons to form zinc two plus and two electrons. Um, <clears throat> the copper, same thing. You can either have copper metal um, losing electrons to form copper two plus or copper two plus gaining electrons to form copper solid. Now, if we plug these in correctly, our E cell, and because we already are told this, we know that the cathode has reduction happening. So this is our cathode reaction. This is our anode reaction because it tells us zinc is being oxidized. So it's zinc going to zinc 2 plus. So we're going to plug in the E from the table. Here I've got three values. Um, I just wasn't paying attention when I typed it in. So 0 0.340 minus negative 0 0.760. Oh, actually it's 763. We're going to leave it as that because that's how I did my notes. You plug this into the calculator and you get E cell is equal to 1.100. Zero, zero. It's a positive value. 
we're on the right track. And so we know that the reactions that are happening at the anode, we have zinc going to zinc 2 plus, plus two electrons. At the cathode, we have copper being reduced. So copper 2 plus, plus two electrons going to copper. Now guys, you don't even have to guess what the reactions are because we give you the, the table here. And so at the cathode, the reaction is as it's written. For the anode, when you're writing the oxidation, it's just, you just reverse the, air, the, way, the direction of the arrow, okay? Um, now, if we had plugged this in incorrectly, if we had said that um, zinc is our cathode, copper was our anode, going from copper to this way, we would have gotten the wrong values. Let me just show you here. Control C, Control V. If we had done it wrong, so that we assumed this way, E cell is equal to, um, here our cathode, we would have had the negative, because this is being reduced, you're adding electrons to this one, zero point, oops, sorry, negative 0 0.760 zero minus anode is the positive 0 0.34 is going to be the negative 1.10. It's the same. No, it's negative. It can't work. Um, and so it just this is technically how things um, will work if you are applying electricity to try and charge your battery um, until you unplug it and you're not forcing it. It's just not a spontaneous reaction this way. Um, so the way that we want it, it's going to be spontaneous in the direction that it's positive, meaning it's going to happen. Even if it's slow, it's going to happen in this direction. Okay. Um, what else do I need to say? Oh, last thing. Um, as you're doing this, you'll notice sometimes you have different numbers of electrons. You could have three, you can have one, you can have two. We don't care if they're the same or not. Um, unlike in other things where we had to balance, here you don't have to. And so let's say we're talking about aluminum. Say I have aluminum and I've got, uh, let's do Let's do copper, just because it'll make my life easier. Um, say we're trying to figure out, we're going to do a, co a copper and a copper solution, and an aluminum and an aluminum solution. And we want to know which one is the cathode, which one is the anode. Okay? Well, we know, first and foremost, that however we plug it in, we have to get a positive value. Okay? So this is negative 1.676, 0 0.34. Um, and the book will tell you, oh, the more positive goes here. It doesn't matter. If you do it one way and it's positive, you're on the right track. So let's say I guessed wrong and I said negative 1.676 minus 0 0.34 because that's a positive value. I get E cell is negative something. For some reason I keep hitting double decimal. There we go. You get negative 2.016. Wrong. It can't be right because it's a negative value. So if we were right and we had it so that it's going to be a more positive number, we're going to put the 0 0.34 as the cathode minus the negative 1.676 E cell equals double check 2.0 and for sig figs, I would only go to the second decimal, but you get the idea. This is right because it's positive. And so 
this tells us, okay, so the one that we plugged in for the cathode was 0.34. So I have reduction happening or gaining electrons here. For my anode, I had this. So aluminum is being oxidized. It's going from aluminum metal to um, aluminum 3 plus and 3 electrons. Okay. And so the last thing I wanted to do is to show you the shortcut here, or how to write the reaction. Mm, let's get rid of this. So because we now know that aluminum is our anode, copper is our cathode for this example, insert equation. We know that whatever is on the left is a reactant, whatever is on the right is a product. Um, and so you can actually put this all together. Actually, where's the notation? I don't know if I can do a vertical line. Hmm. And so you'll have you list first the anode with um, the reaction at the anode being separated by one line, so zinc going to zinc 2 plus. For us it would be our anode is um, the aluminum, so it would be aluminum going to aluminum 3 plus. The cathode is being reduced, so for us it would be copper 2 plus going to copper solid, and it's just a notation that you can do there. Um, so that's kind of what we have um, here. So let's go ahead and look at our pre-lab. In a galvanic cell, where does oxidation occur? Honestly, it's um, just a definition here. Make sure you're uh, checking what it's asking you for. Cations are versus anions. Cations are going to want to flow towards the positive. So anions are going to go towards the, I'm sorry, cations are going to flow to the negative. Anions are going to flow to the uh, positive. So anions are going to go towards the anode to balance the positive metal ions. Cations are going to go towards the cathode to balance the negative electrons. You want to have that nice charge balance occurring here. So if we're talking about cations, cations are going to go towards the anode. I mean that cathode. Ugh, golly. So when I looked a minute ago, I had the opposite <laughs> question, and I was like, oh, and now I just can't get it out of my head. Okay, so consider a galvanic cell. Here we're given the reaction and these. Um, write the reaction occurring at the anode. Now, a couple of things to be careful of. You notice there are spaces between before and after the positive. Um, so wherever your positive is, it has to be plus a space before and after, not the charge, but between the, the two species, okay? So here we know um, in order to get a positive value, our, um, cath our anode has to be the zinc cathode anode um, because in order to get a uh, negative value, did I get rid of it? Well, here. zero point three four minus the negative zero point seven six is the only way that we're going to get the positive value okay and so for that reason cathode is going to be the point three four which corresponds to copper at the cathode we are having reduction it's going to be just like this it's going to be the same equation that it spits out this is a reduction half reaction so you're going to have copper 2 plus. Oops. Then look, space plus space 2e negative. 
I'm not putting a space between the coefficient. I'm not doing a space anywhere except before and after the, the plus indicating two species. And over here we have copper solid. At the anode, we have this guy, the zinc. Zinc is our anode. But because it's being oxidized and this is a reduction half reaction, we need to flip it. So now we have zinc going to zinc 2 plus space plus space to oops E with a negative charge. Now because of how the shortcut is, you write what is occurring at the anode. So here it's zinc without the electrons guys going to Zn2 plus then um, the cathode. So the cathode is going to be Cu, see my reactant over here is copper 2 plus, going to copper solid. Doing the anode um, or the cathode minus the anode, 0.34 minus this gives us 1.10. Make sure I entered all my spaces correctly, and that's how you do it. If you get the spaces wrong, it actually will mark you. So make sure you're paying attention to that. And that's it. Um, all the others are just definitions and safety. So hopefully this helps you guys prepare for the lab. Um, let me know if you need anything else.